Hello and welcome to Library Salad. Today's episode is Childhood Board Games brought to you by the Monroe Public Library in Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Allison. That's right. We are going to go take a trip down memory lane with board games. One step backwards though. I want to thank, she's taking a step backwards. I want to thank my relatives in Oregon, both Danielle and Leola, because last time on Library Salad, we were baking an apple pie. I had mentioned that my pastry brush was had seen better days, have to get a new one. What arrives in my mailbox a couple of days later? That's right, new pastry brush, and thank you very much again. Now, on to the story. There are many reasons why people love board games and what they have is some great memories. Most people can easily tell you what their favorite game was, whether they were good at it, and what was their favorite piece in the games that had different pieces as opposed to just cards. I even asked the staff at the library, which I like to do, um, what was their favorite games. And we came up with Monopoly was number one, followed by Life, then Sorry, Candyland, Clue, and Mousetrap. There's a lot of history, especially in Monopoly. Monopoly has, uh, I'm going to show you these books. These are some books got at the Mon Mobile Library. You may want to do a little extra reading on this. Obviously, Milton Bradley is a big component of this. We've got Scrabble. And did you know that one in three American households have a Scrabble board? True. And for Pasco, this board does come with history. And the fact that, I'm just giving you some basics here. Lizzie McGee actually invented it. She called it the Landlord's Game. That was in 9... 1903, and that's when she she followed the patent for it. Now, fast forward. Let me fast forward like this. Um, there was a lot of changes made by other people, and that caused a bit of a problem. And we can sum it up for you by saying that um, without Lizzie McGee, there would never have been a game called Monopoly for us to play in love. And that, um, and without Charles Darwin, who made some changes, Monopoly might not have come to become America's favorite board game. So if you want a little more information, there you go. And if you want more board games, did you know that the library actually has at least 20 board games that you can check out and take home? Back to Monopoly. All right. What most people call the pieces are actually called tokens. And these pieces have changed throughout the years. When you were younger, you may not have seen a dinosaur. When it originated, the six original game pieces were a battleship, boot, cannon, thimble, top hat, and iron. Fast forward, the current ones are the dog, the battleship, the race car, the top hat, cat, penguin, T-Rex, and rubber ducky. The only two pieces, tokens, that have survived all those years that never were taken out were the battleship and the top hat. Fascinating. All right, now, there's a lot of things and reasons why basically most board games not only are helpful but fun is starting with young children. These type of games, such as Candyland, um, start at a young age, like three years and over, and the fact that there's no reading required in this. You have the colored pieces, the pictures, but you don't have to read. And that's what makes it helpful because it encourages them to count. It helps with people um, patience because you sort of have to wait your turn to become a um, good loser. So there's many reasons why they, uh, the games are very good as we start off younger and as we get older. 
here's another classic. The Shoots and Ladders game. Now, Shoots and Ladders, this is, okay. It started as a name of Snakes and Ladders. All right. That goes back to, um, it's derived from the, let's get this right. Ancient Indian Hindu game. It was probably about 100 BC that we're talking. And this game was um, made so that it's to illustrate the good and bad, I can't even read my own handwriting, deeds, the good and bad deeds of life, okay? And then it got written, recreated by Milton Bradley. And it got the name Shoots and Lattice. So Lattice have some very interesting history. Now, back to Monopoly. We've laminated it, so that means this is very important. Okay, don't laminate just anything, people. All right, so, found out. What were the top five board games? Now, there's going to be different ways people that these board games can reach this upper tier. Um, Better Homes and Gardens was the games of all time. Money Inc. was the top five games sold. Okay, there's a difference there. All right, so Better Homes and Gardens, top five of all time. We're going to count down, we're going down, and we're going up to the number one. Okay, thank you. Drum roll. Okay, five was Scrabble. Okay, four, Monopoly. Three was Candyland, two was Clue, and one was The Game of Life, my personal favorite. Because I like to do with all the little cards as you end up, I would like to get as many of the little kids in the cards. If I had three cards each having, I think there were six little pegs that went in, then I felt a winner. Okay, now, Money Inc. says according to the um, number of games sold, Scrabble is number five. Same thing as uh, Bed Homes and Gardens. You've got Monopoly at four, at three, Batgammon, two is Checkers, and one is Chess. Now, Batgammon, Checkers, and Chess can all be traced back to 3000 BC and earlier. So I would assume that the actual number of games sold, if they're going back to 3000 BC, would certainly make them a t in the top position. What else have we got? All right, so we've got the why, we've got the history of it, and oh, one thing, Mousetrap. I have a question for you. You may remember Mousetrap. Mousetrap was one of the answers for the librarians. It was also one of my favorites too. Took a heck of a long time to get this. Okay, check this out, okay? This is what the amount of pieces that you build. And part of the fun and fascination in time was getting it all together. It was worth it. Now, this is the end, okay? You have the mouse and this is to wrap the mouse. So when you had it like this, okay? Whoops, let's get inside. Right there. For some reason, other people have said, this would always stick and let's go, let's go, come on, go. This one is working fine. But it's one of those things where when you all come together and you say, yes, I remember that happened, that just means that there was a universal feeling about the game and enjoyment to it. So as adults, all right, there are slightly different reasons why adults, um, continue to play games. And one of it is actually for release of anxiety and that it's actually um, makes certain hormones come and that is a good feeling. Maybe it's because of today a lot of times people laugh when they're playing a game. Now there's two different types of laughter when you play a game. There's the just sheer enjoyment. <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. And there's the <laughs> And you move your piece. Either way, it seems to help the body. And you can play really anywhere. So it's easy for an adult to travel or things like that. They may have the small travel sizes. On that, it creates self-confidence. Guess if you win. Um, we've got the happiness of uh, reducing stress. 
uh, help you achieve goals, and it actually strengthens relationships. Uh, that's why Rich just made the face, and I, I'm just telling you what I found out, people. Um, I agree that they could, I don't know how many people are no longer speaking to each other because of the last Monopoly game, but these are all reasons why you may want to get back in the habit of playing board games, especially with the winter coming up, um, and have fun with that. See you in two weeks.